Okay, we seriously need to talk about Gregory. Recently, the story GGY from Tales from the Pizzaplex number 5 was released, and this story is absolutely wild. So today, we're going to take a step back and rewind our knowledge of Gregory to see how this story changes things. So of course, there will be spoilers in this video for GGY. If you haven't read the story yet, then I suggest adding this video to your Watch Later playlist and coming back to it once you have. So, without further ado, let's get on to what this story tells us about Gregory is Patient 46. I know! I genuinely did not see that one coming. If there was someone who I thought wasn't Patient 46, it was Gregory. So how does any of that make any sense? Well, let's start from the start. This story is about a boy named Tony who is searching the Pizzaplex for the person with the high scores in the arcade machines. And if we look in Security Breach, we find that the person with the high scores goes by the three letters GGY. And it's pretty easy to piece together that this is Gregory. A girl named Crystal tells him that she hacked into the animatronics that were behaving strangely and found this same string of letters in the code. Meanwhile, Tony finds out that other people had been using GGY's play pass, acting like a security badge. These people had two things in common. They were all counsellors, and they were all reported missing. So it's here where I'd like to break down a few things. Obviously the big one is, yes, this confirms that Gregory was responsible for killing the therapists in Security Breach, and that makes him patient 46. But the other thing we can imply is that Gregory is under the control of the animatronics, and by extension, the arcade machines. That all matches up well because Patient 46 is shown to be a hacker. But there's a big elephant in the room now. Gregory's just a kid. Well, to counter that, I think we should continue with the story. What I didn't mention is that Tony and his friends at school call each other by their pen names. One friend has the pen name Dr. Rabbit, or Rab for short. It's only by the end of the story that we find out Rab's real name is Greg which is short for Gregory. So, what's going on here? Gregory in Security Breach is the protagonist. He's not evil, but this story very clearly shows that he is. Is it just bad storytelling? Is it an inconsistent character? Absolutely not. Rab mentions in the story that GGY is the wizard's favorite apprentice. It seems like a really random point in the narrative, but this is the key to a lot of things. Who is the wizard he is talking about? Well, it's very clearly William Afton. A wizard, a magician, someone who pulls rabbits out of hats, wears them as costumes, and uses a child's body disguised with the name Dr. Rabbit. That's right, everyone. Gregory is under the control of Afton via Glitchtrap. Not only is he one of Glitchtrap's apprentices, he's his favorite. Right now, I'd say we have three people in the series that we know are both possessed by Glitchtrap and are alive. Gregory, Vanessa, and debatably Tape Girl. So, what makes Gregory Afton's favorite? Well, in pure speculation, I'd probably say it's because he's a child. He's less suspicious and more mobile than perhaps other bodies. Then, with a domino effect, that leads on to the next question. In that case, what's the point of ever having Vanessa and Tape Girl? Well, I'd argue they'd be useful for different things. Remember that Tape Girl was a developer for the virtual reality experience, while Vanessa was a security guard for the Fazbear Funtime service. All of them are useful for different reasons. They would be the least suspicious in doing what they are doing to serve him. So, I am eventually going to make a modern day FNAF timeline with all of this new information, but briefly, FNAF 6 happens, Afton escapes his nightmare of Ultima Custom Night through the circuit boards that Daniel Rocha gives to Steve from Wilson, who then scans them into the virtual reality experience by Steve Snodgrass's original FNAF indie games. That imports Glitchtrap into the system, who attempts to invade the mind of Jeremy, but he cuts off his face and kills himself, which stops the process. Tape Girl comes in, recording tapes about what has been happening before getting taken over by Glitchtrap and splitting him into 16 pieces. This tricks Vanessa into gathering the tapes and getting possessed by Glitchtrap herself, making her Vanny. And then somehow, through the story, the storyteller, Glitchtrap is imported into the Pizzaplex via the storyteller's tree, via the storyteller aka Tiger Rock, wh whoever that is, and that's how he gets into the Pizzaplex's systems. And of course, he has control of the Mimic in the Pizza Place, and that's how he's fully come back. So, here is the question. When and how does Gregory fall under Glitchtrap's control? It's a pretty difficult question because we don't have much else to go off of. If I had to give an answer, however, I'd say it's Balloon World. 
Remember that Balloon World is a glitched game. Follow the glitch too far, and you end up getting possessed by it. You could even say, Gregory was falling into madness. That's right, what if Balloon World is getting a mini spin-off called Into Madness with all the circus and balloon animatronics that tells the story of how Gregory became evil? Sun and Moon is another example of this split personality that we keep seeing everywhere. At that point, Gregory is hiding in the pizzaplex, the daycare room is his room, and he is now patient 46. Vanessa and Gregory, both under the control of Glitchtrap, therefore get the same therapists. Mary Schneider, Raylan Lawrence, Trina Welsh, and Georgia Lowe. Gregory is killing off these therapists, but my question directed to Afton is why? Why does this help him? And my other question is what exactly is it that stops Afton's grasp on Gregory? It could be to do with the Balloon World minigame Underground that is turned off, but these are genuinely questions that I cannot fully answer, so you guys in the comments will have to fill me in on your theories. Also let me know if you want a full timeline, because there's a lot more to it than all of that. So, let's finally talk about Gregory 46. It's a thing I never thought I'd talk about because I always wrote it off as a weird theory. But here we are now, talking about Gregory 46, which is no longer a theory. Firstly, who is Patient 46 referring to? Well, in Security Breach we have the 16 retro CDs that you can collect and they contain audio recordings of therapy sessions. One of these is clearly Vanessa and the other is now revealed to be Gregory. So let's go through all of these one by one, pointing out new areas of significance. Sessions 1 and 2 are hosted by Mary Schneider. In CD2, Gregory doesn't seem to like the sunlight and Mary says that it feels like a cubby hole or a cave. What's the matter? Oh, right. Too bright. I'll pull the shades. When the shades pulled, it feels like we're in a cubbyhole or a cave. Yeah? CD3 introduces Raylan Lawrence, and she talks about Vanessa's broken family, which sounds an awful lot like the Aftons. I feel like I know your dad, too. Bill, right? Your dad's name was Bill. Your dad made you follow instructions, didn't he? I'm talking about the custody battle between your mum and your dad. Your dad didn't play fair, did he? I know your mum after she lost the custody case. In CD4, Raylan finds that Gregory has a problem with the flowers and he doesn't seem to fit the chair he is sitting in. She picks up that he doesn't care about the fact that he has a different therapist. His file says he's a good kid, but immediately she sees that he has a rebellious side. She is surprised by his computer skills and recognizes him as a hacker. That chair doesn't really fit you, does it? What's the problem? Oh, the flowers? Your previous counselor is no longer available. Does that bother you? No. Overall, you don't come across as a troublemaker. But if you read between the lines, it's clear that you have a little rebellious side. And I'm surprised by your knowledge of computers. You're something of a phenom. Do you know what that word means? It means you have unusual skill. Like a hacker. I assume you know what a hacker is. So in the first four CDs, we learn a hell of a lot. Patient 46 doesn't fit in their chair because Patient 46 is a child. The child is usually good, but something about him is different. His computer skills are extraordinary for a child, almost like he has the mind of a genius in the body of a child. Notice that all of this fits perfectly with how we see and hear about Greg in GGY. In CD5, we learn that someone Vanessa is in contact with has been hacking her personal files. What you might not know is that this person who's been sending you messages has been hacking into your personal files too. Then CD6 is with Trina Welsh. She says that Gregory's file looked like it had been copied from a book, rather than actual history. When I read your account of what happened, it came across as, well, more of an objective rather than a subjective narrative. Oh, sorry. You don't know what that means, do you? What I mean is that the way you told the story is more like you were reading something from a book than you were talking about your own past. Gregory takes a candy, but in CD7, Vanessa refuses it. Vanessa does an ink blot test and sees things of nature, even though Trina says she sees a face. What do you see here? A treehouse. That's good. Now, what about this one? A beetle. 
Really? Looks like a face to me. CD9 tells us that Vanessa likes the flowers but doesn't like the dark. Very clearly, we're getting a duality here, showing that one likes flowers and the other doesn't, one likes candy and the other doesn't, and so on. One side is childish and dark, while the other is mature and innocent. It shows that during the therapy sessions, Vanessa is truly herself, but Gregory has Glitchtrap in control of him. In CD11, we are aware Vanessa ordered fake fur material for a costume which is clearly the Vanny costume but she doesn't want to talk about it because apparently he is always listening. You purchased some fake fur material. What are you gonna make? Did you say the costume is a secret? Why is that? I can't talk about this. He said he would always be watching. In CD12, we learn Trina works in schools which matches up with GGY. That is the last of Vanessa's therapy before working at the Pizzaplex. CD13 brings in Georgia Lowe, who talks about how a previous therapist was found mangled by machinery. Apparently, I'm the fourth therapist you've had. And apparently, all three of your former therapists have gone missing. But I have to tell you that one of them was found dead. That doesn't seem to upset you. Well, then I guess I'll go ahead and tell you that the woman's body was pretty messed up. It looked like it was mangled by machinery. In CD15, Gregory does an inkblot test and sees a mask. I saw some inkblot test results in your file. I like inkblot tests. You think it's a mask? It reminds you of a mask? Like a disguise? Georgia says she thinks he is the one doing the manipulating, which is referring on a deeper level to Glitchtrap within Gregory's eyes, the window to the soul. There, that's better. On this side of the desk. I can see your eyes. I don't think you're being manipulated here. I think you're the one doing the manipulating. Apparently Gregory was talking to someone with rabbit ears. Whether that be Vanny or Glitchtrap, it doesn't really matter either way. But CD16 is a perfect fit in all of this. Apparently the glitch is now spread system-wide across the Pizzaplex. They say that when they trace back the glitches, it leads back to Gregory. Apparently, the glitch extended beyond the robots. It went system-wide. It began infecting all the machines, and when the techs traced the glitch back to its origin, it led them to you. That makes perfect sense with the context of both GGY, where we hear about the letters G and Y in the animatronics code, and the storyteller, where we see this glitch get transported across the whole pizzaplex through the storyteller tree's wiring. Then finally, we hear that none of what was said in Gregory's report was true, and when we go back to the previous comment saying that his file looked like it came straight out of a book, that all ties together nicely. Let's look at the bigger picture for a second. We have Vanessa, who very clearly has a dark side Vanny, controlled by and in contact with Glitchtrap. However, in these tapes, she is not in Vanny mode. She's innocent, but you can tell there's still some secrecy. Meanwhile, Gregory is said to have been a good kid in a happy family, but in the tapes, he is infected by Glitchtrap and hacking the systems, including Vanessa's file. This all seems pretty set in stone to me. There's still questions, obviously, but I am so satisfied with this conclusion. So let's take this one final step further. Can we imply anything else about Gregory? Let's go through some popular theories and see if any of this changes anything. Number one, Gregory is a robot. While I don't think this one is absolutely debunked, I'd say there's no narrative reason for him to be anymore. The reason he is a missing kid is because he did have a family. He had people to care for him, but then his dark side came out and now he is alone. So, I'm going to say, while he could still be a robot, he doesn't necessarily need to be. Number two, Gregory is the crying child. While they share similarities through parallelism, Greg is a real kid who went to a school and had a family. I don't think they're the same. Of course, this does come hand in hand with the robot theory. What I will say though, is that maybe Gregory is the wizard's most favoured apprentice because he looks like his son. That's something to chew on. No pun intended. Number three, Gregory was in the post-it note room. So my friend ID did a really good theory video on this and I don't really have much to say about this one because there's a lot of different ways you are able to interpret this room. I am actually going to say, I think this was all done by somebody else though. I'm not gonna say who because I'm hoping I can make a whole video on that in the future. And number four, is he still related to the wall code? 
Well, yes, it literally says everything he does in Security Breach. But then my question at that point is who wrote this message and for what reason? Does this still make Gregory Bot credible? If one thing is for sure, Gregory is not evil. The thing that is truly evil is Glitchtrap. He's got the entire Pizzaplex and several people under his grasp. In fact, the entirety of Security Breach and probably Tales from the Pizzaplex only happens because Glitchtrap is in control of it all. And if you want to hear more about that, then make sure you check out my most recent video essay where I talk about why I love Glitchtrap as a character. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this small breakdown of GGY and how it affects Gregory as we know him. The recent teaser for Ruin actually shows a device used by hackers, and I have a feeling this is connected to Gregory, especially knowing that the date that came with it was the 6th of April. 4 slash 6. We just have to wait and see.